Well, here's a fun request. This person says, I'd like to see you explain how Sargent used warm and cool in his painting cashmere. Cashmere. Seems to me those colors should have made it look muddy. Hey, you know what? The secret is right here. Well, whether you're painting with oils, or acrylics, or pastels, or watercolor, any color medium, the key to using color is right here in this in a color wheel. And if you're using a traditional color wheel, you've got the full information right here if you know where to look for it. I might suggest uh, that you go to our academy at dianemiceacademy.com. And right there on the front page, you have a free little lesson on how to use the color wheel. And you might benefit from it tremendously because it's got the secrets of how the color wheel works and how we can use it. So let's see how that applies to a Sargent's painting cashmere. And the comment was, uh, it looks to me that those colors would make it look muddy. Well, when you're going to analyze a painting done by another artist, the best thing to do is to first of all find what colors that artist might have used to create the painting and analyze how he's actually he or she has actually used those colors. Now I'm going to guide you through that step because it could be beneficial for you in studying how, how any artist uses color and why it works the way it does. So, let's put the color wheel up here. Uh, I think he was referring to these, this use of the background colors here. Uh, so let's, let's find those first, and then we'll talk about why they work with these foreground colors. So if we just put the color wheel down, the first thing we do is, is isolate in our, in our vision one color that we see among all the colors, and we see what seems like multiple colors in there. So, but we isolate one, and we can look throughout any part of the background to do that. If we say here, or we could say here. some Just some place to begin. Well, let's start here, for example. So if I take the color wheel, and I, hold, and I just put it down there, and then I begin to look at these, this color right here, my first step is to find the closest hue in its, uh, in its full saturation. They are at their full saturation on the color wheel. Find the closest hue to what I'm seeing. That's the first. So as I rotate it, I see it's not that close to yellow. It's pretty close to yellow-orange, but not quite. It's pretty close to orange. Maybe we could stop there. Let's make it one more. It's really closer to red orange and now that I'm seeing that comparison I'm seeing both red orange and orange there so let's see first of all without going any further if we can find that color now what we know about the color wheel is that it tells us what we can add into a color in order to change it towards what we're seeing so if if we're seeing red orange uh, and if we don't have red orange on our palettes, but we do have red and yellow, red and yellow on the color wheel, then we have potential for creating red orange. So if you do have red orange, you can start right there. And we've got all kinds of ways we can go to begin with any color, red, orange. But let me just, just break this down into the simplest, simplest steps. So let's say, okay, that's a red, uh, that's in the red, orange, but it's also the value of it is darker. And we all know that alizarin crimson is in the red range. So I'll pull some alizarin crimson out here. And now, 
what do we do to lean it towards red orange we can add orange we can add yellow orange and we can add yellow any of those will do it because it's all of them have yellow in it so let's just go for the extreme and start with yellow so here's yellow notice i'm not really called it calling these well i i call the lizard crimson a a by its tube color but i gotta know that it's red first so if i take yellow and i begin to pull yellow into a lizard crimson and i'm looking at what's happening when i'm doing that and i'm watching for it to turn red orange well you see it doesn't take very much of it for it to turn red orange so and i can add even more and it's still red orange so we have a range of red orange if i compare that and i'm seeing i'm very close there but it's missing something what's it missing on the color wheel we change color two ways but and, and the way colors are arranged on the traditional color wheel now they're not arranged on this way on the Munzel color wheel or on some of those other fancy color wheels that you can pay that 12 and 15 dollars for on the traditional color wheel they are arranged this way and you can figure it out you don't need formulas you don't need these little calculators in the center you don't need any of that stuff you don't have anything to memorize all you need is to be able to locate on this wheel and then decide what to do now red orange has a complement of blue green the complement will change its saturation and so what we're seeing there if we ask that question how is it different it's in the same hue range you can see that right there but it's a little bit less saturated and being able to recognize that is part of the problem that a lot of people have so the best way to be able to recognize that is just to do it just to try it and watch it happen and then you'll know what to do now so we have we have the blue green is the complement of red orange so we can reach for a blue green or we can simply reach for blue and i'm just doing this for a reason and we can add enough yellow into the blue to turn it blue green because it's going to serve the function of desaturation okay now notice the value of that it's a little darker than that value so I'm going to add a tiny bit of white not much just a tiny bit of white to it to raise this value and see what we've got there all right now it's, it's closer in value and you can see it's blue green now we'll add just a touch of that just a touch. Oh, by the way, warm and cool is what the question was about. This is the warm side of the color wheel. If you watch our, go to the uh, our channel, click on live, watch the, the chat session from September 2023. And we're talking, I'll give you that analysis of how warm and cool works in the first like 15 minutes of that somewhere in there you don't have to even watch the whole chat but it wouldn't hurt nevertheless okay so this is cool this is warm but what we're doing here is we're desaturating by adding a little bit of the cool and its complement to that warm now watch what happens when i do that i put it right there just a little bit don't just plop in a batch you got to control this stuff by the amounts like salting food or any kind of seasoning of food you see as i do that you see how that changes and look at that see how close that is now if you'll notice the colors around that are seem very much like that but but they are much more desaturated so let's just do this let's uh, let's just follow our steps here so now this is the first color whoops got to have more than that on the brush this is the first color I uh, created and that is that red that a uh, red orange if I wanted it a more a little bit more saturated I could just add a little bit more of the saturation to it for for getting that variation we see there and you see we get something like that see how close that is 
uh, if we if it needs if it needs it seems to be going more towards orange then we can add a little bit more of the yellow to it and just just control the amount and we can make it more orange like this see I'm just changing it very gradually so if I add a little bit more yellow to it if I add a little bit more green to it what else what do I have now I have what we see around it now that is not muddy I did put some white in that green still not muddy the colors are very vibrant Sarge's colors are very vibrant if I move over and you can see that uh, you would just need to move keep adding a little yellow more maybe a little bit more yellow maybe a little bit more red each stroke maybe change just a little bit and you began to get exactly what Sergeant got there was no secret there he just knew what he was doing as we move the color wheel over we begin to see a little bit more of that green appear so let's just move it over and let's just see if we can do that now we've already mixed a blue green right here and that seems to feel maybe a little bit more yellow than that maybe so maybe not we don't know but let's find out okay let me get another paper towel because i've got to keep this palette knife wiped while i'm doing this all right so i put a little bit of yellow into this blue green and it will turn it a little bit more towards green or yellow green and i'll just do that and now let's see that seems uh it it's needs to be, guess what, desaturated. So, I now do the reverse of what I did before. I pull the red. I'm going to get enough of that this time to put on the brush to show you. All right, now, I'm going to pull just enough of this red-orange back into here. Not much, just enough to change it a little bit more. And you see how close we are there? Maybe change it a little bit more. Just a tad more. Just a touch more. Now if you overdo that, it does get muddy. It does get out of control. But uh, controlling the amount that you add to it, you see I'm very close right there. It does seem darker. So if it seems darker, that means I need to have a pile of this blue, I mean blue-green, without white. So we'll just mix another pile of blue-green. Or you can use blue-green. I'm just uh, showing you the bare bones of this. We've got so many choices. In fact, you will, when we get through with this, you'll see how he, did, he could have done this entire painting with just three tube colors in white. And my bet is that he did in one way or another. But I'm just going to, I don't want this to run too long for you. But I just want to show you here. Now, uh, if we take this, this red-orange now, and we begin to work it into that blue-green, you see how very dark that is? Put a little bit of that lighter color into it. And just a little bit more. Just a little bit. There we go. Right in there. We are very, very close to what Sargent was doing there. But you can see by gradually adding color in, gradually according to where the color wheel is pointing that it needs to go by gradually adding that color in we can get very very close to what the artist got so I'm going to rinse off my brush now and show you what we have now let's start out right here let's see very very close still needs to be more desaturated I didn't predict that so I'm going to add a little bit of white to it because it is lighter and it's still a little bit more desaturation. The, the warm and cool aspect of two colors emphasizes them. So that a color might appear to be a lot more saturated than you think it is because of an opposite or a complementary color that's surrounding it. So if I put that right here, you see I'm very close to what Sargent has. In fact, I believe Sargent's is a little bit more yellow green than mine. So... Let's do that. 
it's a little bit more yellow green add a little bit more yellow to the yellow green see I'm doing it very gradually easing the brush in pulling it gradually changing it and we have right there that's pretty close to what Sargent has now you can see that that it, it ranges in value you can see that the colors will get a little bit more lean a little bit more towards yellow and when it leans a little bit more towards yellow like it is in these areas right here you can let your eye go in this direction then what we do is we do what the color wheel tells us if it says it's more yellow or more yellow orange then we make it more yellow or more yellow orange if it says it's desaturated more desaturated then we add a little bit of the complement to it and a little bit more until we get it more saturated now you see I've got com uh, I've got complementary colors together right here sergeant's got complementary colors together notice they're pretty much in the same value range but you see they're not muddy now two things about not muddy how do you keep it from being muddy when you're working with complements like that one is you don't overstroke it if I stroke if I just keep stroking and keep stroking and keep stroking it will go muddy so the fewer strokes you put down the more brilliant the colors are going to be and that's what Sargent knew he was known for his poetic stroke where he could he'll have the color mixed on the palette well maybe one stroke two at the most maybe oh, rare rarely three he's got it so that's one thing and then the other thing is when you when you're working with colors like that that you are able to isolate them in your mind of what the hue is what the value is and what the saturation is and when you do that you have unlocked the secrets and there are no secrets it's just that people don't explain it to you so you just unlock what your color how your color will guide you and you'll be just fine when it comes to mixing colors like this oh by the way before I stop I want to show you one thing why this works I will not like it if I finish this without showing you that it works because of things that the two colors have in common so we have red orange and blue green and look what they have in common the red orange the orange itself is a complementary complement of blue the red itself is a complement of green but green and orange both have yellow in them they have a harmonizing element in them and when when two colors mixed together have a single color in common no matter how different they are you do have an ability for color harmony without getting mud be sure and view all of our quick tips while you're doing so subscribe to the channel click on the bell so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip which is every week and if you have a question leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you also take a trip over to dyingmize.com where I have full length lessons downloads DVDs lots of other stuff there some free stuff for you and while you're there you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new